morning. Uh, once again, welcome to this uh, lecture series on foundation engineering, and we are uh, discussing about uh, uh, shallow foundation bearing capacity. And uh, I have uh, discussed already various aspect of bearing capacity, and finally, I have discussed about Tarjagi's bearing capacity. And basically, uh, 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 Tarjagi is the uh, first person who has uh, given the bearing capacity concept in an acceptable form. Before that, of course, there was some uh, work, and, uh, and then uh, he has introduced uh, bearing capacity in the three components, uh, cohesion component, surcharge component, and unit rate component, and he has given three factors, and uh, those uh, factors, of course, uh, uh, later on when uh, uh, compared with the experiment and all uh, found a uh, little bit of over estimation and obviously uh, uh, to uh, improve that and also for the research purpose many people uh, investigated on bearing capacity and there are uh, plenty references uh, work uh, literature available in the uh, literature and uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, we can discuss all those thing in detail. Uh, in uh, in MTech level, postgraduate level, so the BTech undergraduate level, I pass bearing capacity concept is generally is, uh, uh, is enough, but uh, I want to discuss one more uh, theory uh, where actually we can intru introduce uh, so many other parameters or factors. And uh, basically, when uh, other theories are developed, uh, uh, obviously, uh, Tarjagi's bearing capacity analysis, there are some assumption and uh, it could uh, improve the assumptions, uh, some of the limitation may be overcome at a later stage and maybe some other additional uh, assumption was made. So, like that, several uh, bearing capacity uh, equations, uh, theories given in the literature and uh, by and large, they are uh, similar, uh, basically uh, similar in the sense, uh, similar in the sense, uh, uh, this uh, bearing capacity uh, equation again given in the uh, form of uh, uh, three components, one is a surcharge component, another is uh, uh, cohesion component, another is weight component, component unit uh, weight of the soil component. And the only difference in and uh, and this uh, 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 NC NQ N gamma form, uh, these factors are given. And uh, uh, only difference uh, mostly in this uh, NC NQ N gamma value. And when uh, discussing Tarjagi bearing capacity uh, theory, that time I have mentioned that that uh, determination of N gamma is little bit of difficult. And they have done and they have given in the form of chart or graph. And here over the time people also uh, investigated on N, N gamma, how to simplify it and they might ha they have given finally, in the simplified form. And in, addi in, in addition to that, uh, uh, there are some uh, additional assumption or some modification was done. And uh, uh, in the literature actually there are number of uh, uh, bearing capacity theories available like basics, vengeance then uh, your uh, uh, Meyerhoff uh, like that there are uh, uh, many uh, th th theories are available, but I will discuss basically on uh, Meyerhoff theory and this is the one uh, uh, Meyerhoff uh, theories actually what he has given that I will discuss. And what way it is different from uh, your uh, um, uh, Tarjagi's theory is, uh, Tarjagi's bearing capacity concept was something like this, uh, if this is the footing, so it is like this, so uh, bearing capacity concept was something like this and then uh, there are three zone, one, two and three zone. So, of course, uh, uh, for uh, Tajak is bearing capacity, uh, it was the sorry, up to this was the limit uh, 
and uh, here actually there are surcharge and that is all a uh, resistance from this uh, consider, but in Meharov equation uh, Meharov theory actually this 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 shear plane extended up to uh, also beyond uh, footing base and some additional resistance from this also considered. So, that is the uh, difference mainly and with this uh, concept uh, and uh, uh, so many other things also observed uh, like uh, uh, though n q n gamma and uh, n c uh, they are function of uh, phi it is given, but later on it is seen that uh, with uh, shape of the foundation or with the depth of the foundation these also vary little. So, because of that they have given a correction factors there are number of correction factors I will come to that and otherwise uh, Tarzaghi bearing capacity has given only uh, derived equation for uh, uh, strip footing and he has given uh, q ultimate equal to c n c plus q n q plus half gamma b n gamma this is the form in the given for strip footing and then he has extended and he suggested for square and circular footing when it is square and circular this this one multiplied by 1.3 and this one become 0.4 for square and 0.3 for uh, circular footing that was the thing given by Tarjagi. whereas uh, uh, the footing can be of rectangular shape of different uh, aspect ratios so because of that because of the shape of the footing and because of the depth of the footing uh, those factors n c n q n comma may vary little. So, because of that to make it very generalized uh, 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 different people actually uh, uh, given the equation uh, of bearing capacity uh, uh, ultimate bearing capacity in this form and you can see uh, uh, in, in this form when you are uh, uh, doing. Uh, then this it, there are so many uh, uh, earlier it was there only c and c now you can see there is a factor s c there is a factor d c there is a factor i c here s q d q i q then s gamma d gamma and i gamma. So, these are the so many factors are included in this to, these are all correction factors and this correction factor for cohesion uh, for actually um, a shape factor cohesion uh, in uh, correction to uh, 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 correction to uh, bearing capacity factor for cohesion for shape. Similarly, correction factor for depth of embedment, correction factor for inclination of the load. So, that means, shape factor is what that means, footing can be of circle, footing can be of square, footing can be of rectangle, footing can be of long strip. So, like that these are the because of the different shape we can have this S c in the cohesion part. Similarly, uh, for different shape we can get a correction here that is S q. Similarly, for different shape we can get a correction here that is actually S gamma. So, like that like that uh, shape similar to that there can be depth. So, footing can be of uh, uh, footing can be placed like this and this depth this is the depth of the foundation d f this can be 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, 4 meter like that. So, the depend of so with the variation of the depth of foundation this n c n q n gamma also vary. So, that actually given in d c d q and d gamma and another thing is the load uh, so far in this uh, loading is considered as vertical that means, if the footing is here and the load is considered to be in the vertical direction. And so, uh, this is the uh, vertical loading, and then, uh, uh, but this loading can be because when there is a moment or something, then resultant force can be inclined. So, because of that inclination, so there is a factor correction factor for inclination of the load. So, I C, I Q, and I gamma. So, that like that in a very generalized form, this bearing capacity equation is expressed by Meyerhoff and others and uh, uh, so finally, uh, so he has suggested since additional consideration is considered in the uh, in the shear itself 
uh, above the base of the footing. So, N c, N q, N gamma also little varied in addition to that the introduction of S c, D c, I c, S q, D q, I q and S gamma, D gamma, I gamma are given. So, these are the so he has given all those in a in the particular form so that one can use easily. So, I will go uh, one by one to those uh, thing. Uh, so, this is the generalized uh, bearing capacity equation. Next is you can see now we are uh, giving you uh, the uh, uh, different uh, 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 n c, n q, n gamma they are actually bearing capacity factor for cohesion, surcharge and weight of the soil unit weight of the soil. This is actually same as uh, before and uh, uh, that means, but the value will be uh, little different because uh, the expression everything I will come to that next slide. And S c, S q, S gamma that is shape factors uh, for cohesion, surcharge and weight of the soil that means, shape factor this will be introduced in three components. Because of the shape that in the surcharge component, cohesion component and weight of the soil component there will be little change that change how to incorporate by inc it can be incorporated by introducing this shape factor. So, S c, S q, S gamma. So, because of the shape the factors will be introduced in all three uh, parameter uh, components and when it is introduced in cohesion component that is shape factor for cohesion, when it is introduced for uh, surcharge that is called shape factor for surcharge, when introduced in weight, weight of the soil part then that is shape factor for uh, uh, unit weight S gamma. Similarly, uh, three more factors like D c, D q, D gamma also uh, introduced and they are called depth factors and as, a, as I have shown uh, in the previous slide that uh, with, the, with the increase of the depth of the foundation uh, your uh, this uh, N c, N q, N gamma or that uh, total resistance because of cohesion, surcharge and weight of the soil will, will differ. And so that differ how 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 much it will be it will be differ it will differ, and that actually it, the, uh, it, it incorporated by factors, and that factor actually when we introduce in cohesion part that is called uh, depth factors for cohesion, when introduce in surcharge part then that is called depth factor in surcharge, when introduce in uh, weight part then that is called depth factor for. Uh, unit weight of the soil. So, these three will be introduced in three different part. Similarly, I c, I q, I gamma that means, as I have told you that uh, when the loading is uh, something like this, uh, your, your footing is something like this and loading is something like this. Okay. So, in that case there is a some inclination and uh, of the applied load because of this inclination the bearing capacity will not be same. So, that has to be modified. So, that all three components will be getting modified. So, how to modify we can introduce some factor that is I c, I q, I gamma than I c means when inclination factor when given to uh, cohesion I q means inclination factor to the surcharge and I gamma is inclination factor in the unit weight part. So, all three uh, so, that means, uh, uh, total 9 here are 3 already there. So, 12 uh, parameters and uh, so, C is the cohesion of the soil, gamma is the unit weight of in the previous bearing capacity, whatever was there. So, C will be cohesion and gamma unit weight, B is the width of the footing and Q is the surcharge pressure at the level of the footing. That means, uh, uh, if you think of, uh, if you think of the footing like this, So, this much depth of the soil will give you some surcharge here. If this is d f, so they are actually surcharge will be gamma times d f. So, this that has to be considered. So, that is the way uh, uh, the introduced. Now, let me see the next slide and at the beginning actually I have uh, shown that uh, bearing capacity uh, uh, equation and uh, there 
uh, all, uh, all the this, this, these are almost similar and this one I have told there itself actually since uh, n gamma is difficult to uh, estimate but uh, a lot of mathematical complexities, complexities are there. So, Meherhoff also did that and for different values of phi he could calculate n gamma and finally, he has fitted that n gamma in the form of this equation. And, and finally, uh, this is the form of equation is given for a calculation of n c n q n gamma. Also, he has given the table form that means, with the variation of phi how n c n q n gamma varied that also is given. So, you can see for uh, uh, 0 when uh, phi equal to 0 that means, totally q cohesive soil the value of n c is 5.14 and n q is 1 and n gamma is 0. Now, one thing to be noted here that Meherhoff n c value for cohesive soil when phi 0 condition phi equal to 0 condition n c become 5.14. Whereas, in Tarjagi's bearing capacity equation this uh, uh, when phi equal to 0 the n c was 5.71. This is one uh, difference has to be uh, noted uh, that means, uh, sometime uh, if the question is asked that uh, apply bearing uh, uh, Meherhoff equation and find out bearing capacity of the clay soil, clay soil means that may phi may be 0. In that case your bearing capacity will equation will be equal to c n c and sometime you may demand that what is the value of n c, but since 0 for phi equal to 0 quantity n c value has to be remembered. If it is uh, Tarjagi's theory then it is 5.71 and if it is a Meharaf theory this is 5.14. So, that means directly I can write 5.14 c as per uh, uh, your uh, um, Meharaf equation or the theory and it is q ultimate I can write q ultimate equal to 5.71 c as per Tarjagi's uh, uh, bearing capacity theory. So, these are the uh, uh, one different and similarly, if you compare with Tarjagi's table with the Meharov's table we can we can compare at any uh, angle of phi and you can compare these three values and you will see there are some changes some uh, different they are different actually. So, particularly uh, when it is a 30 degrees this this value was 37 uh, this value was sometime like 20 something this was 18 something like that there are a little little different, but ultimately uh, the Meherhoff's uh, uh, bearing capacity uh, was developed later on, but more logical and because of that it is more acceptable people actually in the industry may use either Meherhoff or basic, basic we are not discussing they are almost similar. So, Meherhoff theory only I am discussing. So, if it is not mentioned uh, you have every right to use either Tarjagi or Meharov, but if it is mentioned that you use Meharov equation, then you have to use this table, and if it is mentioned Tarjagi use Tarjagi's theory, then you have to use Tarjagi's table. And sometimes it may be uh, value of n c n q n gamma for phi value may be given, and you have to directly to be used whether it is Tarjagi or Meharov, you do not have to worry about it. So, this is in the tabular form, and this is in the equation form n c n q n gamma one can obtain. Next part actually there are additional 9 components uh, 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 given you can see here uh, that s c s q s gamma uh, when it is strip footing it is 1, when it is strip footing it is 1 that means you can see that when it is reduced to uh, it reduced to uh, Tajagi's uh, bearing capacity. So, the it becomes C n C plus Q n Q plus that means, there is no uh, safe factor. And uh, for rectangular footing you can see for rectangular footing he has given uh, S c equal to 1 plus 0.2 B by L tan square 45 degrees plus phi by 2 that means, if there is a footing something there a rectangular footing. So, this is actually your B and this is your L. So, you have to put B and L and tan square 45 degree plus phi of the phi of the soil suppose 30 degrees 
then you have to reuse 30 by 2 15, 45 plus 15 60. So, tan square 60 multiplied by b by l multiplied by 0 0.2 plus 1. So, like that if it is the uh, so if it is suppose uh, b over l if it is b over l is suppose uh, it is 1 and it is 2 then it will be suppose for uh, l by b equal to 2 then in that case the value will become phi equal to 30 degrees it will become 1 plus 0 0.2 multiplied by 1 by 2 multiplied by tan 60 degrees uh, 10.3 square so uh, root 3 square so it become 3. So, you can see uh, 1 plus uh, 0.6 by 2 so that means 1.3. So, that means when there is a uh, rectangular footing of L by B equal to 2 then your shape factor SC become 1.3. So, uh, so that is the thing if as per uh, Meyerhoff equation and S Q S gamma he has given two sets of equation S Q S gamma he has given uh, two sets of equation one for when phi equal to greater than 10 degrees they, these are all actually empirical equation. So, it is fitted equation. So, because of that the, the fitting may not be applicable for over the full range of phi. So, because of that he has divided in two parts up to phi uh, greater than 10 degrees this is the equation that means if b by l 1 by two, uh, 2 then this will be 0 0.1 1 by 2 tan square for 60 degrees again that can be done. So, it will be 1.1 in that case it will become 1.15. So, S q and S gamma become 1.15 and so when phi equal to greater than 10 degrees that means 30 degrees I have assumed initially. So, it become 1.1 because how it will become? 1 plus 0 0.1 multiplied by 1 by 2 multiplied by uh, 3. So, it will be 0 0.3 by 2 that will be 0 0.15. So, it become 1 plus 0 0.15 equal 1.15. So, the S q S gamma uh, for uh, rectangular footing ratio L by ratio 2 and phi 30 degrees it become S q S gamma become 1.15. And suppose if the phi is equal to 0 uh, phi equal to 0 then S q S gamma equal to 1 for phi equal to 0 that means of course, it is not given between 0 and 10 degrees what will be the value one can uh, use their uh, 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 judgment and little change can be little less than this a little greater than 1 can be used. So, this is the two ranges given. So, in between one can interpolate if wish. So, this is the way uh, so, that means that how many uh, we have given S q S gamma uh, uh, for uh, strip footing is 1 and S c value uh, there is a universal value with respect to phi is given and S q S gamma for phi greater than 20, 10 degrees this is given value and if it is 0 this is given another value. So, that means S c S q S gamma uh, these three uh, uh, quantities are uh, already explained. Now, next three components. you can see dc dq and d gamma here also you can see uh, dc again expressed 1 plus 0.2 d by b tan 45 degree not square here 45 degree plus phi by 2 and dq equal to d gamma equal to this expression when phi equal to greater than 10 degrees and dq d gamma equal 1 for phi equal to so that means again dc uh, uh, there is universal value uh, there is no limit for phi value but d q d gamma if it is phi greater than 10 degree this is a value and if the phi equal to 10 degree this is the value. Now, in between 0 to 10 degree values are not given one can use that judgment to use the value in between values if it is phi equal to 8 degrees or 9 degrees or 6 degrees. So, in between values can be used. So, that means by this expression the d c d q and d gamma are given. So, d c is the unique uh, equation and d gamma d q d gamma for depend on phi greater than 10 degree this is the equation and if 0 this is the equation. Similarly, I c I q uh, uh, given in this by this equation and this is given in the form of equation 1 minus alpha by 90 degrees and alpha in degrees and alpha equal to 10 tan inverse q h by q v this is actually q v and this is q h 
and q h by q b that means vertical component and horizontal component uh, ratio uh, ta tan inverse if you do that you will get the alpha value and that alpha should be expressed in uh, in, in degrees for, for example, if it is a uh, this uh, tan inverse q h by q b become 40 degrees or 50 degrees then I have to reuse 1 minus uh, suppose 30 degrees then 30 by 90. So, it will become 1 by 3. So, 1 minus 0 0.33 that means 0 0.67. So, that means I C I Q will be reduced to 0 0.67. That means, if I keep the vertical load vertical whatever bearing capacity if the load is inclined then your bearing capacity has to be reduced that is what factor is becoming smaller than 1. Similarly, uh, I C I Q is given by this equation and I gamma given by the key, this equation that is 1 minus alpha by phi. Alpha by phi here alpha as it is uh, and both are in the same unit to be expressed in degrees. So, alpha 30 degrees phi 30 degrees. Uh, then you have 0 actually uh, otherwise uh, depends on the value alpha equal to 10 degrees and 30 degrees. So, it become 1 by 3 1 1 1 2, like that whatever value it comes based on this i gamma to be calculated. And then this can be introduced in the uh, uh, generalized equation to get the bearing capacity. Now, uh, sometime uh, uh, your uh, uh, load is eccentric like uh, if I if this is the uh, area and this is the centroid, this is the centroid, this is the centroid, but uh, instead of load applied through this point, it is applied eccentrically somewhere here. And so, uh, two ways it can be done, it can be uh, reduce the area. Uh, so, what you have to do the, if the load is ap applied eccentrically, then there, there will be moment. So, to overcome that difficulty what it can be done the footing can be imagined in such a way that point of application and center of the area will be same. So, if you want to do that then what I have to do I have to reduce this area. So, how to reduce this the if the eccentricity is E and width of the footing is B then that effective width become effective width B equal to B minus 2 i s E. Okay. And so, that is the only way the bearing capacity that means, if the load is eccentric that means, there also bearing capacity has to be reduced. How to that same equation can be taken only here instead of B, B dash can be that effective unit uh, effective weight will be used. And if the uh, if the eccentricity is in both the direction then that means, if the footing is somewhere here like this and load is applied here. So, there will be eccentricity in this direction eccentricity in this direction. So, effective width can be uh, calculated by this b minus 2 e x effective length will be can be l minus 2 e l e y and then uh, uh, we can uh, uh, best first we can calculate the bearing capacity based on width and then capacity of the footing can be used uh, by q ultimate multiplied by b dash multiplied by l last. So, like this. Now, this contact pressure distribution here actually uh, uh, below the footing when uh, load is applied uh, depending upon our type of soil and type of footing different pressure distribution will be seen. When the cohesive soil generally uh, edge pressure will be uh, more and center pressure will be less and if this is a purely cohesive soil generally theoretically this is actually very high value and in the middle actually is quite less value. When the cohesion less soil edge generally pressure is less and the middle pressure is maximum and if it is a flexible footing then what happens generally the footing settlement become uniform uh, non uniform, but pressure become uniform. And most of the time we will try to uh, use the uniform pressure distribution uh, whatever may be the condition, but in the, uh, uh, in the safer side we use uh, uh, uniform pressure distribution and when you do this uniform pressure distribution and bearing capacity and based on the loading on the footing uh, whatever pressure contact pressure is coming that contact pressure suppose q c must be less than the q allowable. That means, 
bearing capacity of the soil should be greater than the pressure because of this loading. So, because of that actually uh, we have to see now the contact pressure how for different loading condition how the contact pressure changes. Uh, first of all if it is a concentric loading because of the soil type some variation will be there, but most of the time we take this, but if the loading is not concentric or through the center then the variation of the pressure over the uh, uh, footing width will be different and for that how to solve this problem uh, uh, we have to see in the, uh, the next lecture. With this I will uh, close here, thank you.